All right. So this is a new Circle of Champions success story interview, and nothing brings me more pride when we have these interviews with a closed and apartment deal. It's always a learning, great learning experience, always very exciting. And I want to congratulate Mr. Garland Ferguson. There's Garland right there. And um, just to give you a quick background, like I say, newest Circle of Champion member. He wholesale a duplex in Columbus, Ohio. Believe it or not, put this property under contract for $8,500. $8,500. Flipped it for 20% on top of that. Made $2,500 on the transaction. So with that, Garland, let me welcome you to the call. I'm here. Hey, man. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thanks and, for having me. Uh, oh, gosh, Ron, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be here and sharing your story. And, um, Ron, what I'd like to do, I just have a few slides with have some questions prompted on it. And uh, I'll be asking you some questions from the slides. And, and, of course, I want you to feel free to answer any question you feel like or decline to answer any question you don't feel like. Um, but I just really, really appreciate you taking the time here. But before I get into your questions, you always got to say, show me the money. There's the money, $2,500, Garland, on, on your deal there. And um, wholesaling a, du a duplex, $8,500 on a duplex. How do you do that? Well, we're getting ready to find out. So so Garland, as, as way of a introduction here, I always like to ask, you wouldn't mind sharing with people listening, you know, what is your background in real estate? What prompts you to get started with apartments and or real estate? How long have you been involved? Um, and what training have you received? Okay. <clears throat> well, my background is um, I've been involved with real estate and, uh, since about 97. I bought my first uh, home, which was a, a duplex. And... Uh, I had been in the military and I took my uh, VA um, loan and bought that duplex and rented out a portion of it, which made me a landlord. And I've been doing that since 97. Uh, I do own, along with my wife, a condominium and that duplex and a fourplex that we uh, keep rented out and everything. So my background, that's pretty much my background for real estate. Uh, you know, as I grew up, my stepfather and uh, some of my other family members, they had rental properties and everything. So it was always something that kind of intrigued me and everything. Very good, very good. And um, did, you, did you learn from the street? I know you've got our home study. Did you learn it from the street? Any formal training? How, how, how did you get, or what did your family help show you how to get started? No, um, believe it or not, uh, I mean, I've seen my family involved in it, and um, but I was still young and just kind of running around, so i I'd seen it, but not really actively doing anything with them. I learned from uh, books and some other training uh, programs that I bought and things like that, so I, I've been, uh, I spent some money on education. All right, very good, very good. So there's a picture of the duplex right there in, in, in uh, Columbus, and it's you know, a duplex. Not much information <laughs> to it. <laughs> That's what a duplex looks like, everyone. It's even got satellite dish, <laughs> dishes on the top and some, some window units. It looks like it's an upstairs, downstairs unit. So let's get a little, more, let's get a little bit about the, the deal. So, so Garland, how, if you wouldn't mind sharing, how did you find this property? What was the situation? Kind of what was the opportunity you saw, and, and how did you go about pursuing it with getting another contract? Um, well, I found the property through you know, after I got your course, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of detail here. I was I buy some books off of Amazon, so I have purchased your book off of Amazon and started reading it and just pretty much devoured it in about about a week um, and I was like okay let me let me get into this do you know doing some type families instead of houses because I'm a wholesaler here in Columbus and I've done uh, 
I think we're close to 60 deals just in houses. And uh, when I started reading your book, I was like, okay, he's talking about graduating. And I had been feeling that way. Like, I need to graduate to multifamilies. And that book, your book just really, uh, it touched me with that whole thing about people feeling like they have to graduate. And I was feeling just like that. So I wound up uh, taking my real quest uh, membership and going in there and pulling some uh, multifamily uh, properties off and mailed out about 200 I think it's about 200 maybe 250 letters yellow letters I sat down and hand wrote and uh, the seller called me up <clears throat> and so I went through talked to her for uh, you know went through the motions of talking to her and it found out that there was a probate property that uh, she had inherited uh, her and it was actually four other siblings had inherited and they she was her and her sister was the two that were still living and they wanted to get rid of the property and so I was like okay I came out and um, and and went over to the house with her went through it and everything and uh, I was like okay yeah I can do something with this um, turns out she said she wanted 20,000 for the property <laughs> and uh, based on the the condition that one of the units that I was able to view was in I told her I couldn't do that and uh, so I went I told her let me see the other unit and she told me well there's a tenant in there and they won't let me in and I said is that why you want to sell it she said partly <laughs> And so I, I said, okay, um, then it must be in pretty rough shape. She said, well, it used to be pretty nice, but I haven't been able to get in there. I said, well, are they paying their rent? She said, yeah, they pay their rent. And I said, how much are they paying? And she told me they was paying like $300. I was like, no way, because that property or any property in that area, a two-bedroom, and they actually had the better unit, because uh, it was a bath and a half, that's easily five hundred dollars, right over there. So, <clears throat> long story short, her and I uh, came to an agreement on the. Well, she asked me, like she said, twenty thousand. I was like, I can't do that. Um, and I went and pulled some comps on it. I already knew the area, so I told her that uh, the best I could do was eight thousand. And she countered me and said, can you do 10? Well, I told her, let me talk to the committee and see if if they'll accept, you know, if they'll do 10. I called her back the next day and said, the best they would do is $8,500. And she said, okay, I'll take it. <laughs> that committee was you, yourself, and I kind of committee? Exactly. <laughs> so, that, 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 that's the referring to a higher authority. That's very that's excellent. That's very good. So the committee comes back. Here's, here's, here's the best, our best and last offer. All right. So you got to agree to eighty five hundred. You got it on a contract now. So um, you already said that eighty five hundred was your purchase price. And if you talk now about the negotiation, great, great strategy. Use the committee. That's exactly what Garland talked about. Defer to a higher authority gives you um, some limited negotiating power. Basically, and a great strategy there. Uh, all right, so you got the thing under contract, Garland. So, so now let's look at the other side of the wholesaling equation. How did you find your buyer? You know, how did you determine your sales price? And that, what was that? What was that negotiation like? Um, <clears throat> I have a, a small buyers list. There's probably 250 people on there. Um, so I, I shouted out to those individuals. I didn't get any feedback um, or anything, and so I decided um, I would just do a, a postlet flyer. And of course, with postlets, that will post to a bunch of different websites, and it just so happened it was Zillow was one of them. And um, I started getting some calls off of it, and I had done some bandit signs um, around the property. Uh, around here, 
the signs they the, we got like the sign police. They uh, they kind of got pulled down. I did get a few calls. I put them out on a Saturday. By the end of the weekend, they were they were pretty much gone. Uh, Monday, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, they were gone, and I got a few calls off of them. Uh, just I think basic uh, tire kickers. Well, after I put the Zillow ad up there, or the guy came through from Zillow, and he wanted to see it, so I went out and showed him the place, and uh, he was he was interested. And he had and initially I had priced it at 15. Um, I, yeah, I priced it at 15, and he offered me 10,000. I was like, I no, I can't do that. And we were talking, and this was his first purchase, um, and he's actually um, a Hispanic, and uh, I like working with them because I've sold to them before. And uh, he, he was all cash, and he was like, yeah, I want the place. And I was like, okay, well, we can't do 10. And um, I told him, well, I could do 13.5, and then we kind of negotiated, and I settled in on 12 because I was uh, just ready to get rid of it. Um, and he was like, okay, we'll do 12. I told him you pay all the calls and costs, and that was that. Now, and so I, if I understood, this was his very first rental property purchase of any kind? He just wanted, he just wanted to get started in rental? Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. He told all me right. he, was, he was looking for a property because um, he, you know, he had some money saved up. And he was looking for a property to uh, buy some rentals. And I said, okay. He came, and him and his wife, they looked at it. And um, I told him, well, you can't see this other unit, so I don't know what you're getting. And he was okay. <laughs> he, he thought the price was perfect. So I was like, okay. And uh, we kind of went from there with the 12000 All right, so 12000 his price. You've got a contract for eighty-five hundred. That's thirty-five hundred. You had a, you ended up with a check for twenty-five hundred. What was the other thousand? I asked him for a thousand dollars earnest money deposit, and he brought me a check the the next day for a thousand dollars earning money earnest money deposit. Four thousand dollars earnest money deposit? No, one thousand. One thousand. Okay, one thousand. All right, so did he get that back at closing? Was that credited toward his purchase? Yes, it was credited towards his purchase. Okay. Um, so that's your net your net twenty five hundred. Right. Total of thirty five. All right. So so now what's interesting, this was not your first duplex. You you would actually your first home was a duplex, yeah. You said you'd bought a fourplex. And yet you felt like you said when you read the book you know, how to make big money in small apartments, you felt like you needed to graduate. That's interesting to me. Why do you feel like you needed to graduate when you already had done a duplex and a fourplex? Well, those were conventional. I bought those with conventional loans. So to me, they didn't count. It was just like I put money out there and got, you know, still have mortgages on those properties. And I'm like, hmm. It, it, you know, they just... They didn't really count to me. Um, you know, initially my goal was um, to buy, have 100 units, and to either be duplexes or fourplexes. And when I got going into wholesaling, I got caught in the house. I call it the house trap. And, and I just started focusing on houses and never really thought much more about the duplexes or the fourplexes. Uh, my marketing was really just centered around single-family houses. So, I, at the, consequently, I kind of felt like I got caught up in that, in that, just doing single-family houses, and that's where I was like, I got away from what I initially said my goal was, and and then I did start to feel like I needed to graduate out of houses into uh, bigger things that would get me bigger deals and everything. And also, when I was reading your book, um, I work full time. And when I was reading your book, how you had talked about in there, 
you were working full time and you only had a few hours to put towards the business and you figure should I do houses or should I do apartments and you you came to the realization doing apartments would get you where you wanted to be faster and so I started to say huh I better look at this again and that's where I started okay let me start moving towards apartments so that's that's fascinating. You know, so this was your first apartment that you wholesaled. You've been wholesaling lots of houses. You said sixty houses. This is your first apartment you wholesale. Correct. So now you've got that first one under your belt. So what's next for your business, Garland? How do you look at how do you look at things now with moving forward in your real estate business? Well, I just um, like I said, I, I had sent out those two hundred letters. Um, I got I got about 20 I think 27 um, calls that came through my phone system uh, I know about 13 of those were um, regular calls the re other ones were uh, actually it wasn't 13 it was calls that led to this deal and other uh, things that I'm working on there was uh, 10 of those calls that were people left me information or showed some kind of interest and then the other uh, 17 was hang-ups and so I out of those 10 I got a, a six unit there's three duplexes that sit in a like a pod and I'm working on trying to put a deal together with the uh, owner of that property so I love it I love it so I imagine you're gonna start adding you're not giving up on your house business, but you're going to start adding uh, apartments to your to your uh, I guess your profit stream, correct? Definitely. Um, I'm not giving up on the houses, but uh, I kind of see me not really focusing on them as much as I have in the past. Um, I really just want to get into the apartments uh, side of things. Because I was work as I was working through the Quick Start Manual, uh, I started building my uh, dream board. I had been wanting to do one, and uh, I noticed that uh, all the properties that I put on the dream board were multifamilies and big apartment units. So uh, I think I'm moving towards uh, bigger things on the uh, house, uh, past houses, and into apartments. Excellent, excellent. All right, I've got one more question for you, Garland. And this one, you know, we've got people that are listening to this call, people that will be listening to it in the future who have maybe not yet done a real estate deal at all, like I was when I got started. You know, when you look back on it, on this deal, from your heart, what is the single most important thing you learned in this process that you would share? Um single most important that uh, I would say coming from the house side apartments and duplexes and probably fourplexes putting those transactions together is really no different than houses uh, I mean it all came together pretty somewhat quickly in terms of the fact that I was able to go get the contract, uh, it took a little while to close the transaction because it was a probate, but I think the biggest thing was that the whole thing about you need to graduate, it's probably mindset, at least it was for me for sure, uh, but it, it's, not, it's not hard at all to uh, move from single families or into multifamilies. Excellent. Well, Garland, I mean, again, congratulations. Super proud uh, for you, of you, excited for you. And um, I just want to, you know, thank you so much for sharing, uh, sharing, you know, the, with the process you went through. It really helps so many people to hear them when, when um, someone's got their first, in this case, first wholesale deal done on, on apartments. So congratulations. Thank you.